What's up, everybody? This is Neil Real, and this is Let's Please God, a ministry designed to help you get right with God. We're at episode 33, and today we're talking about how to overcome any sin. We're in a series called Church Detox, where we expose the things you do, you may not have been taught in church from the pulpit at your assembly and some things you may have been lied to about or some things that have been omit. Last time we talked about what the true gospel was, the full gospel was. You know, today we're going to be talking about how to overcome sin. So let's get right into it. Usually what happens is from a lot of these churches, they, they hear the gospel. Some of them get born again and they try to please God their, their best they can. You know, they say, I want to do everything God says. I want to please him. And so they go, they open their Bibles up and they try to follow him. And they're successful for a little while. But eventually, eventually they begin to fail and they begin to fail and fail and fail. And they don't know what's, what's going on. And they're trying their best and they're sad and they're upset with themselves. Devils begin to condemn them and try to make them feel like they're not a child of God. They'll become depressed at times because they can't seem to overcome their sins. And it, it becomes confusing and frustrating because they want to please God. You know, and I went through this same experience. The remedy is the Holy Spirit, to walk in the Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk about how to walk in the Holy Spirit. So first of all, let me just get out in the open that there is a problem with us. And that's exposed in Romans chapter 7, verses 14. Because if we don't accept this, then we're going to be failing, hiding our sins and becoming hypocrites or giving up and saying, I just can't be a saint or a follower of God because I'm such a failure. No, that's not the will of God for you. He wants you to be successful and victorious. And so he's given you the Holy Spirit. But we first need to understand our weakness. We have something in us that's coming against what we want to do, the right that we want to do. And so let's go here and do that right now. Romans chapter 7. This is from the New Living Translation. Romans 7, 14 to the end of the chapter. It says, so the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave of sin. He just got through talking about how the law is good, but it seems to arouse the sin in him. And we're going to talk about that in some other uh, sermon. But for right now, he's just exposing what's what's wrong with us. He says, the trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. Verse 15, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. The answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. So we got this dilemma. You got this. You want to obey God, but your flesh wants to do something else. So he's telling you this is the way it is for everybody who's born again. You want to do the right thing according to God's laws and statutes and commandments but your flesh want to do something else so we got to understand that that's that's what's happening we have a dual nature we are weak all right so what's the remedy well the remedy is the holy spirit let's go to galatians chapter 5 verses 16 he says here galatians 5 16 is in the new living translation again so i say let the holy spirit guide your lives then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves there it is right there. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. 
These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you're not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another to or to be jealous of one another. So here it is. The remedy is to walk in the spirit. So how do you do that? You say walk in the spirit. I mean, well, how am I supposed to do that? OK, well, here's how you do it. At first, we must, number one, acknowledge that we're weak. And I'm going to go to a scripture just to talk about that for a minute. This is Matthew 18, 3. And this is Jesus saying, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will not get into the kingdom of heaven. Little children are humble, okay? They're reliant on their parents for everything, okay? That's how you got to be. So now, if you want to overcome your sins, one, you got to say no to them completely, as we said in this verse here. Let's go back to it. He said, those who belong to Christ have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to, to his cross and crucified them there. So if you want to overcome sin, you have to make a covenant with God that I want to do the right thing and I don't want to sin. I don't want to sin. I don't want to do this thing. And you nail it to the cross and say, I ain't doing that. So you have to be completely separated from it and say, I hate that. I'm in no, I am not in agreement with this sin. I do not want to do it. It's false. It's wrong. I'm against it. Because some people struggle with sins because they still like it a little bit. So they still got their toe dipped into the water and they, they still a little bit. You got to be completely removed from it. From there. You can pick up the Holy Spirit's power to overcome that sin. And here's how you do it. You be humble. You acknowledge your weakness. And then you say that Holy Spirit strengthen me. That's it. Holy Spirit, I need your power to overcome this. And I've done it. Every time I've done that, every time I remember that I'm weak and I need the Holy Spirit's power, I'm able to overcome that sin. I'm able to overcome that thought. I'm able to change my thoughts. I'm able to not end up sinning. It works for me and it'll work for you. This is the remedy. You want to overcome any sin, nail it to the cross and pick up this, the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the struggle is that our flesh doesn't want to acknowledge that we're weak. See, everybody want to walk in their own flesh and power and say, I can please God. But I think that those listening to this message is at a point where they've given up and said, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm keep failing God, you know. So you have to be that with every sin in your life, every area of your life and say, look, I can't I can't do this without the spirit of God. Once you do that and you say, I need the spirit of God, then you believe that God's Holy Spirit's power will allow you to overcome that sin. You will say no to it. You won't even practice it. You won't even do it. You have to believe that that's that's that he's capable of doing that for you. OK. And if you do that, you, you, you're you going to overcome sin. You're going to see it happen immediately or gradually as you continue to practice that. I've overcome a lot of sins like that. Pornography, resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness, pride, you name it. Now, it's not to say that you won't be tempted in the future and stuff like that. You just apply the same principles to it. Oh, you tempted me again. Oh, I feel like doing this. I'm going to go to the Holy Spirit and say, hey, I'm weak. I need your power. And before you know it, you overcame that sin again. Sometimes you forget and you fall into sin. You have to get up, confess your sins, repent, get the Holy Spirit. You know, you get washed up and you get you go back again. But you have to remember that you're weak on a daily basis. And that's the thing about your flesh. You got to kill it every day. You got to remember that this thing will come back every day. You got to kill it every day because it will 
sometimes submit to you for a season and you'll feel like, man, I'm, I'm just winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. But you're not remembering that you need to focus. Look back at the, the flesh and say, you dead today. I'm done with you. Because what will happen is you'll be doing a bunch of wins and you, you forget about the flesh. And then at some point you think you're doing it by the spirit and you, you, you're working in your flesh now. And then you end up falling because it was your flesh that was keeping the commandments or, you know, obeying God. And so you have to acknowledge that that flesh is weak and it's there and it's, it's always going to try to get you to go the other way. So you have to acknowledge that and then you pick up the spirit, spirit's power and you're good to go. That's how you win. That's how you overcome any sin. Okay. Now, here's a few barriers to uh, walking in the spirit. Okay. One, we said pride. You got to get over pride. You are weak. Anybody walking around think they can please God on their own flesh is a liar and they ain't never going to be successful. Okay. And a lot of these people who are walking in the, on their own flesh, talking about they're keeping the Ten Commandments and all this. Look, eventually you're going to fall and you're so proud that you ain't going to tell nobody. and You're never going to say I was wrong. And then you're going to start walking in hypocrisy where you're practicing the same sins you condemn other people for. See, the Bible says that in Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through ten, it says we were saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ain't nobody getting into heaven into the kingdom of God for all eternity talking about how they got in. I made it. No, it was by the grace of God. Everybody got to give glory to God for their salvation. Nobody's going to be able to say I did it. I kept the commandments on my own. I'm good. You know, no, you kept the commandments because you was walking in the spirit. You was handicapped. And the Holy Spirit had to walk you through through praising God. That's how that worked. We make the decision to repent of sin and obey God. The Holy Spirit power come in as we accept his power. And then we're able to please God. It's, it's, we're working together. The Holy Spirit and you are working together to please God. That's how that works. Without the Holy Spirit's power, you're not going to please God. You can do it in your flesh for a season. God's going to look at you and say, I don't even I don't respect what you're doing. And this is this is something that he said in, in Scripture. He said in Isaiah, I think, 1664, 64, 6. Yeah. Isaiah 64, 6. He says, um, your righteousness is like filthy rags. God doesn't accept stuff from us. He only accepts stuff from his spirit. So one of the things that I've heard from people and it's, I like how they say this. He said, if God didn't breathe it, he won't receive it. In other words, if the Holy Spirit ain't in it, he ain't accepting it. Everything must be done through the Holy Spirit. All your works is going to be brought to God. He's going to have to be able to see the, his spirit in everything you've done. Then he'll give you credit. But if he just see you, he can be like, no, 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 I don't want that. I don't want that. You see? So that's how that works. Now, here's the barriers to walking in the spirit. There's two barriers. Number one, bad fellowship. If you want to please God, if you want to walk in the spirit, you got to get rid of people who are not walking in the spirit, who don't want to please God, who are going contrary to your life. OK, we are called to live set apart. We are called to be holy. And that means there are certain people that we are connected to. We need to disconnect from. OK, first Corinthians chapter 15, verses 33 talks about evil company corrupts good habits. So you with people who are not following God. They're going to mess up your walk with God. They're going to hinder your, your spiritual growth and your ability to walk in the spirit because they're going to be interfering and messing you up and all that stuff. And fellowship is a connection. So you're connected to people who don't want God. They're going to pollute what you're trying to do, your connection with God. So you got to disconnect from them. OK, uh, we talked about distractions. We talked about people in your life that you need to cut off. So you can you can check out that that sermon for, for more information about that. But the other barrier is demons. If you if you practice sin for so long in a particular area, say, for instance, pornography or something like that, you got to cast the spirit of lust out. If you have been a gluttonous person for so long and you want to overcome that sin, you got to cast the spirit of lust out. Those are both, those are all coming from the spirit of lust. OK, so you can say I'm a walk in the spirit today. I've repented of my sins. I've come against all this. 
yet something in you still pushing you towards that sin. Well, you haven't cast out the spirit. So it's bad enough you got your own self, but then if you have a, if you have a spirit there, so you just cast the spirit out. And we have talks on that. Well, I think I have an article on that yet. I don't think I've talked about it. Basically, you cast the spirit out. Pray and fast and they'll get rid of the spirit if it doesn't come out, but just by calling it out and saying, get out of me, you spirit of lust. Whatever that you've been doing, which you would call that in, in this example, I've given pornography and or in gluttony is the spirit of lust. Spirit of lust, get out of here. You unclean spirit, of, get out. You don't even have to know the name. Just start calling it out. Get out. I don't want you here no more. You know, and then you, you repent in those sins and you clean all that up. And that and then it can't come back because you're not practicing that sin. If you, and you fill that area with the Holy Spirit. You see? That's all you got to do. So those are two barriers, demons and people. Get rid of those people. Get rid of those demons. You'll be fine. Yield to the Spirit of God. Get rid of your pride. Say you weak on a daily basis. Anybody walking around in their own flesh talking about they're powerful, they got this. I don't need God for everything. I'm strong. I can overcome. You lying, you, you're going to be a failure. And unfortunately, you know, what happens to some people is they end up becoming hypocrites or they just give up. And just say, I can't do this. But God don't want you to do that. He wants you to be victorious and successful. And you can do that through walking in the spirit. That's how you overcome any sin. That's how you please God. If he calls you to do something, go somewhere. You say, man, I'm, 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 a, little, I'm a little concerned about that. I might be fearful about that. Go to God and say, that's how I feel. But I'm going to please you anyway. And I need your spirit's power. And you'll find his power coming in. And you're, you're able to please him and do what he's, he directed you to do. So let the Holy Spirit guide you and lead you and empower you to overcome sin. And you will. If you can't stay at a place where you say, well, I can't I can't be I can't win. That's where some of these liberal Christians are at, where they just they just end up in sin and say, well, I can't overcome homosexuality and I can't overcome that. I can't I can't stop sinning. So I'm going to just stay here. No, you can through the power of the Holy Spirit. OK, so. That's how you do it. That's how you win. You just you, it's practice. You just keep doing it on a daily basis. You're never going to have to not need the Holy Spirit. You're never going to not need the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you to walk in the spirit. And until next time, be blessed.